Now that we've reached the end of week six, let me try to review what I think are the most important concepts associated with the second law of thermodynamics and entropy. First, the definition of entropy. It's a state function defined as ds, the infinitesimal change in entropy, is equal to delta Q reversible, so the reversible heat change, but divided by the temperature. For an isolated system at constant U, that is constant internal energy, and constant volume, spontaneous processes occur until the entropy is maximized, after which point the system is at equilibrium and only reversible processes will continue to occur. The second law stated mathematically is either ds is greater than or equal to delta Q over T, that's in sort of the differential form, the infinitesimal form if you like, or for a macroscopic change, delta S is greater than or equal to the integral of del Q over T. The inequality holds if the process is at any stage irreversible, the equality holds if it's reversible along the entire path. Clausius summarized the first and second laws in a single statement. The energy of the universe is constant. The entropy is tending to a maximum. Turning to the statistical mechanical aspects of entropy, the Boltzmann definition, S equals K log W, is maximized when the total number of systems in a microcanonical ensemble are distributed equally among all the degenerate energy states. And an alternative definition of statistical entropy is S equals K log omega, where omega is the degeneracy of the system or of the ensemble, depending on which you want the entropy for. The molar entropy change for the isothermal expansion of an ideal gas from volume one to volume two is equal to the universal gas constant R times the logarithm of V2 over V1. So that's true irrespective of whether the change is made reversibly or irreversibly. The difference between the reversible and the irreversible processes is in the sum of the entropy changes of the gas and of the surroundings. So if any point along the way the process is irreversible, then that sum will be greater than zero. If it's reversible all the way, then the sum will be zero. The entropy change in the gas will be equal and opposite to the entropy change in the surroundings for the reversible process. We also looked at entropy of mixing, considering a mixture of gases. And while I used an example that was more convenient to draw of two gases, bromine and nitrogen, actually you can express it more generally that the entropy of mixing is equal to minus R times the sum over as many gases as there are, N sub I, how many moles there are of gas I, times the natural logarithm of the mole fraction of I. That is, how many moles of gas I are there out of the total number of moles of gas present. And I see in that equation, I seem to have an I subscript on entropy, and that's just a typo here. This is the overall entropy of mixing. It's always greater than zero because the mole fraction is always less than one, so the logarithm is negative, all the other quantities are positive, and there's a negative sign out front, so it's always positive. Mixing is always spontaneous. Yet another form of entropy we looked at was the probability form, and that says that the entropy is equal to minus Boltzmann's constant times the sum over different states, probability of a state, log the probability of being in that state. That function is maximized when all the probabilities are equal, and moreover, by invoking probability, it provides a direct connection to the partition function. When we make that connection, we discover that entropy is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the temperature times the partial derivative of the log or the partition function with respect to temperature, holding number and volume constant, plus simply Boltzmann's constant times the log of the partition function. So that's a new feature of entropy compared to most of the other state functions we've looked at before. It doesn't just involve a derivative of the log of the partition function. There's actually the log of the partition function itself appearing in the expression. If we 
express the differential of the molar entropy in another way, taking advantage of connections to other thermodynamic state functions and quantities. It's equal to the constant volume molar heat capacity times dt over t plus the universal gas constant times dv over v bar. We also looked at a Carnot engine as an example of a, uh, a process using an ideal gas to turn heat energy into work, and we discovered that the maximum efficiency of such an engine is 1 minus Th over Tc, where Th is the temperature of a hot bath from which heat is extracted in order to do work, and Tc is the energy, excuse me, the temperature of a cold bath into which heat is dumped. And finally, uh, based on the analysis of such an engine, we looked at Lord Kelvin's restatement of the second law of thermodynamics, which says that no net work can be obtained from an isothermal process. Well, those are some of the key aspects of entropy as it relates to the second law of thermodynamics. In the next week of the course, we're going to continue studying entropy, but we're going to look at it from the context of a, another law, the third law of thermodynamics. And we'll begin by looking at entropy and other thermodynamic functions.